The Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway is a railway that you've probably never heard of. You've probably never travelled on it, but this both magical and bizarre railway actually existed. In this short documentary inspired by Jago Hazard, we're going to take a look at the history of London's most obscure lost railway, and just what happened to its famous locomotives. The Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway was one of the finest examples of fiction being brought to life. In 1939, Roland Emmett, a former draftsman for the Air Ministry, published his first cartoon in Punch magazine. His cartoons typically found humour in the difficulties of life in Great Britain during and after World War II, but his illustrations soon began to include depictions of machinery, vehicles, aircraft and locomotives, absurd locomotives that were not like any other. These engines became the famous engines of the Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway. Emmett's cartoons depicted three different types of locomotive. The first of the three was Nelly. Despite its strange proportions, the locomotive was still designed to be a conventional steam locomotive. The second was Neptune. Neptune depicted an engine that was built using the wreck of a paddle steamer, and the third and final locomotive, Wild Goose, was designed using parts more akin to an airship. Emmett's drawings, together with witty captions, grew in popularity, but it wasn't until 1951 that the designs were brought to life. Emmett was approached about turning the engines in his comics into real working locomotives for the 1951 Festival of Britain. The plan was to construct a temporary miniature railway in London's Battersea Park. Emmett agreed to this and allowed for the design of his locomotives to be turned into miniature representations that would be able to pull passengers. Emmett's fictional railway ran from far twittering and oyster perch. However, a radio show set in the fictional town of twittering meant that a change of name was in order. It was then that the name Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway was born, and the man who was set to build it was Mr Harry Nuttall Barlow. Harry Barlow was a name famous within miniature railway circles. Barlow was an engineer from Birkdale in Southport and had been involved with the Lakeside Miniature Railway along Southport's Marine Lake since the 1930s. In 1945 he was fortunate enough to purchase the railway and had always acknowledged the impracticality of steam locomotives being used along the busy line. Barlow set out to build his own diesel-electric locomotive. At his workshops in Birkdale, he constructed the first of his diesel locos. The loco was powered by a second-hand war surplus Fordson Major four-cylinder diesel, coupled to a Tilling Stevens generator which was situated in the locomotive's tender. A series of cables transferred the 110 volts to a centrally mounted traction motor and differential, which in turn drove the driving axles on the front half of the locomotive. The loco was designed to a 462 wheel arrangement and had bodywork inspired by Sir Nigel Gresley's A4 Pacifics. It was named Duke of Edinburgh and arrived at Lakeside Miniature Railway in 1948. The locomotive proved incredibly successful and as a result Harry built a further two Duke of Edinburgh's for other miniature railways, one in 1948 and another in 1950. It was decided that Barlow's tried and tested diesel electric chassis would form the basis for Emmett's locomotives. All three locomotives were constructed at Barlow's workshop in Birkdale and were initially tested at Lakeside Miniature Railway before making the journey south to Battersea. Nelly, the famous engine of the Far Tottering and Oyster Creek Railway, has come to life. This supremely attractive locomotive, complete in every astonishing detail, has been constructed with loving care at Southport. This figment of Emmett's imagination, fitted out with every possible comfort and luxury, can really get up steam. After a few preliminary runs to see that she doesn't boil over, Nellie and the streamlined coaches that she draws will be coming to the Festival of Britain. Visitors will then be able to see Cloud Cuckoo Valley, Wisteria Halt, Dogfish Point, and all the other charming stations on this fantastic line. Southport, where inspired by that fantastic railway artist Emmett, they built an engine for the festival. As you'd expect, it's not quite a streamlined affair, but carries its own buffet for making tea, including table decorations. And the one candle power headlamp is designed to combat any power cut. Besides pulling carriages, its normal function, this locomotive can even tell you the strength of the wind, if any. Of course, children must have a look to see what builds up the steam, and apparently it's a diet of old rags and fresh air. Yes, Nelly becomes part of the far tottering and Oyster Creek Railway. And who knows, with so many trains being withdrawn to save coal, she may soon be taking her place in relieving those rush hour queues. Thank <laughs> you. 
the railway was an immediate success. The railway opened on the 11th of May 1951, and the one-third of a mile line carried over 1,000 visitors an hour while maintaining a three-train operation. The railway was ran in the same way that Lakeside Miniature Railway was ran. Each terminus station consisted of two platforms with two runaround loops. Rather than exchanging a single line key, the train itself acted as the driver's token and were allowed to proceed along the line on the basis that the driver could see another train next to him in the platform upon departure. This practice initially worked well, but a problem later arose. On the 11th of July, only two months after opening, Nelly and Wild Goose were involved in a head-on collision outside Oyster Creek Station. The collision resulted in the injury of 13 passengers and the death of one lady, Mrs Roberts. No formal inquiry was held and the railway ran a single train service while the other two locomotives were repaired. It was soon back to business as usual for the line until the end of the festival that year. Despite the festival coming to an end, and the railway only intending to be temporary, it survived in its original layout until 1953. Things for the locomotives, however, had to change. The design of the locomotives were copyrighted by Roland Emmett, meaning the bizarre styling had to be removed at the end of the festival. All three locomotives were taken back to Barlow's workshops and converted to his conventional Gresley A4 inspired design. The locomotives each received new names in keeping with the royal theme that Barlow had for all his engines. In 1953, Nelly was rebuilt as Princess Anne and Wild Goose rebuilt as Princess Margaret and both locos were taken back to Battersea. Harry Barlow at the time had been building a new A4 for Saltburn Miniature Railway called Prince Charles. It was decided that Neptune, once converted, would also share the same name. Completed in 1954, Prince Charles stayed closer to home, joining Barlow's own fleet of locomotives at Lakeside, where it took the place of its prototype sister, Duke of Edinburgh, which was due to be loaned to the newly formed miniature railway in Lytham St Anne's. The line of Battersea was relayed during this time into another area of the park. The line was now 840 yards long, with an intermediate station for the adjacent funfair. The railway ran as a two-train operation under the operation of the adjacent fairground until 1972, when the now tired and unreliable pair of locos were eventually put into storage, never to be run again. The line survived, standing but not operating until 1975, when the railway was lifted and the locomotives were sold. So, what happened to the locomotives? Princess Anne and Princess Margaret, being diesel electrics, were subject to heavy vandalism to strip the copper wire from the mechanism. One of the pair was effectively written off, and the other loco was in a very poor state. Both locos were eventually sold and placed in storage until 1977. There were plans to open a 15-inch gauge railway at the Medina Valley on the Isle of Wight. Both locos were moved to Portsmouth, but the plan never came to fruition. The two locos languished in storage at Portsmouth until 1982, where they were sadly sold for scrap. Their sister engine, however, has a slightly happier history. From 1954, Prince Charles pulled services at the Lakeside Miniature Railway. The loco was around for the Golden Jubilee of the LMR, having opened on the 25th of May 1911. It was rejoined by its prototype sister engine, Duke of Edinburgh, in 1962 from Lytham St Anne's, and again by Golden Jubilee, Harry Barlow's ninth and final 15-inch gauge locomotive, built in 1963. Southport has been a seaside resort since the late 18th century, and popular with holiday makers. The children would enjoy the Lakeside Miniature Railway, a 15-inch gauge line, first opened in 1911. However, a serious fire in 1931 closed the line until 1948. King George was an Atlantic, built originally by Bassett Loke. In 1948, a 460 was built with A4 outline for Duke of Edinburgh, powered by a 40 horsepower diesel engine. In 1968, the railway changed hands. John Spencer, a stall holder of Southport Pledgeland, purchased the railway and locomotives, and the railway ran in his ownership until 2001. The LMR is not the London Midland region, but the Lakeside Miniature Railway, originally Llewellyn's Miniature Railway, built in 1911, the oldest 15-inch gauge railway in Britain. The three-quarter mile line linked the Mums and Dads Fairground at Pleasureland 
and the kiddies' fairground at Peter Pan's playground. The locomotives were originally steam. By the 1970s, the railway had three steam-outlined diesel-electric locomotives dating from 1948, so it was early in embracing the new mode of traction for railways. The Princess Anne, a diesel-mechanical locomotive, arrived in 1971. Today, the line rosters the four diesels and one steam locomotive. Some of the passenger stock is from Roland Emmett's famous far tottering and Oyster Creek Railway at Battersea Park built for the 1951 Prince Charles also became a minor celebrity loco once more appearing in a 1990 music video to Groovy Train by Liverpool band The Farm In 2001, the railway was sold to Don and Jenny Clark for £225,000, all assets included. Prince Charles had a new owner once more. With Duke of Edinburgh over 50 years old and Prince Charles approaching 50 years old, the locos were due a major refurbishment which unfortunately fell through. Duke of Edinburgh and Prince Charles were due to be converted from diesel electric to diesel hydraulic. The electrical equipment was well past its sell-by date at this point and the couple had seen how easy seven lamp diesel hydraulics were to maintain and operate. Both locos in the early 2000s moved to the Windmill Farm Railway to eventually be rebuilt once more. Prince Charles was the first of the two locos to undergo modification. It was stripped of its Fordson major engine and its Tilling Stevens electrical equipment but this is where the story ends. The conversion was never completed. With the locomotives now under the ownership of Austin Moss, the shell and rolling chassis of Prince Charles reside at the Windmill Farm Railway, alongside another of the Barlow-built sisters, Duke of Edinburgh. The loco has been seen on display outside the workshops on a number of occasions, awaiting the day when it will be reunited with an engine and pull a train once more. The original Neptune Builder's Plate survives as a museum piece and can be seen on display at the Atkinson Museum on Southport Lord Street. I'd like to thank you for watching this documentary. If you wish to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing and feel free to explore the other railway related content on the channel.